We'll start soon. Thought it had one more little ripple. That goes to show how frequently I listen to the entirety. Claire de Lune. Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching. Space Train is presented by Pro Noia Theater and Technically Be Kind of Strangers, although we've been dropping that recently. We're very excited to have you join us today. Hey, if you've been watching Space Train, you may or may not know that we are in the anti penultimate episode of season one, which means that the next two months' episodes. Uh, the next one will be on June 3rd, and the one after that will be on uh, July 1st, I believe. 
are, are going to be very explosive indeed if you've been watching and enjoying the travails of the space train. Uh, Pronoia wants to thank you for being here today. We have a very exciting show for you, along with some very exciting people. If you enjoy this, please consider donating at paypal.me slash Pronoia Theater or Venmo at Pronoia. You can see a live production from Pronoia every Thursday at 8 p.m. And next week, we're going to be doing a production meeting uh, outlining a season two episode of, of Space Train. So if you want to be surprised by the end of the season, maybe you don't want to watch that quite yet. You want to save it for a little later. And uh, two weeks from now, we're going to be doing our fourth edition of Pictures Meeting, which is a live sketch workshopping show, which we really enjoy. Well, I don't think you want to stick around listening to me. I think you want to watch Space Train. And indeed, we will begin Space Train right now-ish. Boy, howdy, what an exciting day today is. You see, today I have the whole day off to play with science. Pretty much every day here is amazing, but this might just turn out to be my favorite day on the space train. Whoopee! So, Tommy, are you excited for the science fair? On the one hand, wow we, of course. But on the other, not really, Mr. Professor. See, I looked at the list of names that signed up and, pardon my language, it's a who's who of notable dunderwhelps. Ah, yes, the foil of genius. The brighter you are, the duller the world, and the people in it doubly dim. But then again, they'll never know the euphoria of discovery, unless you count discovering ever more hurtful names. I mean, Shatskull isn't even clever. <laughs> S school. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like the more I learn, the less I discover. Unquestionably. Mm. Ah. Tommy, I envy the depths of your ignorance. Still, learning something new every day. That's the minimum scholastic requirement for my age group. You know, I still remember my first science fair. Very well, then. Let, let's see what we have here. Another revolution of science's associate professor, Rat Skull. It's Rat Skull, Principal Muggins. And yes, I've developed a psychoactive pharmaceutical, digestible unctuous medicine for day-long undoing of memories, or dum-dum pills. Each dose removes 10 years of memory for a 24-hour period. Of course, a natural dum dum like you wouldn't need that is something. That's quite enough, Rat School. I see. For all your learning, we still have to teach you respect. Ah! That was the first time I said ah. Jeepers, Mister Professor, that sounds miserable. Oh, it was, Tommy. Why? I can still remember having to tutor remedial mini variable vector calculus. It's a tensor, Daniel, not a stressor, a tensor. Ah, no, perhaps I don't have to remember it at all. <laughs> there we are. I think a fistful of dum-dum pills ought to do it. <clears throat> to the submission table. <laughs> Tommy, are you okay? I heard the professor laugh, so naturally I came running. Oh, sure, Miss Rook. Mr. Professor's just wiping his memory. I think he wants to enter the science fair. <laughs> Those dumb, dumb pills. Well, he'll be disqualified from winning, but we can't stop him from entering. We, Miss Rook? Bet your bouncy castle, Louis. You're looking at Rory Rook, a science fair judge. Wowee! That's right, kid. And don't go thinking I'm going to pay you any favors just because you're my top twerp. I guess that means you can't do us any favors either, huh, bestie? <laughs> Drea, say hi to my B-F-F-A-E-A-E. -E -E. Hello. Well, look at you. I, I would really rather people didn't. What was that? Drea is staying with me this summer. She decided to stay with me because I'm the cool aunt. <laughs> Let me guess, you don't have any sisters. <laughs> well, do you have any sisters? I have seven I'm sisters. 
And Leah's the... Yeah. You poor skid. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll be helping her with her entry to the science fair, and we're going to give Tommy here, he was once a coolest kid, a run for his money. Oh, wowie! I didn't know there was going to be money. There's not, Tommy. Don't be such a gullible Gregory. You're making me look bad. Are you kidding? Nothing can make you look bad, bestie. You're being a literal Lisa again. I like you, kid. Your skin is flawless. <sighs> Ignore us. Please, so, Tommy, what are you doing for the fair? Using positrons and elysium foil to demonstrate the existence of anti-photons. What about you? Cool volcanoes. For cool kids, though. Well, hopefully it's fun anyway. I've been kind of bored lately, so. Hey, don't touch that, you grease-filled host man. Oh, the, the professor. professor. That's rat skull. And look, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. Put those pokers in your pockets, professor. Rory, you always spoil my fun. And look, I'm Rory Rook, famous female fatty daddy. Rory Rook, competition judge? Please escort this troglodyte in his unwashed coat away from my table. He nearly ruined my whole project. All right, cool it, kid. Professor, let's get you to your own table. Fine. That science was probably sour anyway. <laughs> Don't mind the professor. He may seem weird. I mean, he looks weird and sounds weird and smells weird. And I can only assume he feels weird and tastes weird. But ultimately, he's so harmless, he's ashamed of it. I cannot stand frippery or filibuster. Now, if you'll be so kind, I need to reperfect my quantum inversion device. Hmm. A quantum inversion device? Golly! My name is Tommy Edison, by the way. I can already tell we're going to be great friends. <laughs> Nikita. Nikita Tesla. And no, you will almost certainly be neither great nor my friend. Now leave. All right, folks. We have here a collection of the sharpest and greatest innovations in the world of pre-collegiate studies. Our chief concern is crowd control and limiting unscienced personally conduct. Now, if we, Tracy, are you paying attention? Uh, you didn't say bing bong. Fine. Bing bong. All right, folks. We have here a collection right, fine. of the- I was listening before. Happy Sheriff? Teach? We heard ya, but you didn't have our undivided attention. Well, if you're not going to take this seriously, then... Well, I was going to say don't help at all, but I really need to help, so please just take this seriously. Uh, Sheriff Algani, I see you requested security be set up next to the statistical recreation booth. Mm, I still think bookie booth is clearer and more playful. It is, Boris. It is. And I'll be playfully serious in ensuring all gambling regulations are followed. Oh, I always say the most fun part of gambling is following the rules. Ugh. Boris, what can I do for you? Hmm. Have we had our first cryer yet? Not yet. Over under is 13.01 if you're interested. Hmm. I'll take the under. Usual wager? You bet. Well, I bet. <laughs> And the same amount every time. Hi, I'm Larry Ratskow. Will you be my friend? Why would I want to be friends with a gross old man with mustard stains on his lab coat? But I'm not old. Just my body is. <laughs> so this loneliness doesn't last into adulthood. <laughs> oh, I should have known it would be the professor. Tough break, Boris. Should I put it on your tab? Yeah, stack it on. Poor Boris. How much does he owe you? Oh man, that guy's got the most bad luck of anyone I know, so I don't actually take his money any Damn it! How do you keep finding my shameful kindnesses?
And if no one here knows how to make a proper crepe, maybe one of these a petite protege can invent one instead of bringing me these sin pancakes. Where is our final judge? The craft services table isn't what it used to be, is it, Helen? Oh, no, Helen, not since. Since the cinnamon? Swirly. Helen's. Helen's always remember. <laughs> The judge's booth is right over here. Let me introduce you. This is Renault. He's a juggler. Rena, bonjour. If you don't know me by my juggling, perhaps you know me by my jawline. Would you like a sad pancake? Yes, please. Oh, one of the Helens. Which one of you is the judge? I am not a judge. A judge. If they weren't rich, they'd be crazy. <laughs> And last, and literally the furthest thing from least. My bestie. Rory Rook, famed and infamous journalist for the news space, New York Times, and best friends with Leah. Yep. And everybody, this is Trisha Parsons, proud captain and crew of the half sunk tugboat that is a space train newsletter and theater defendant in a libel case if she prints anything she just said. Seems mean, but true. <laughs> Do we hate her, Rory? She's been like so nice to me, but I can hate her. Yes. All right, butt flies, not you, Rory. Glad I could introduce you. Thank you for finally joining us, Rory. Hello, I'm Patty. I'm reporting on the fair. Your news lettering, Patricia, a whole day intentionally shattering me rather than just living in my shadow. <laughs> How fun this will be for you. <laughs> Except the things you cannot change, Patty. Arr, bing bong, Tracy. Yes, Teach. Look over there and tell me what you see. Two kids talking. Mm, you see the way they seem to dart their eyes about and how they shift their feet nervously. Methinks they be conspiring nefarious things. Oh, yeah, definitely. Only explanation for two teenagers to act anxiously. I think you better keep an eye on them. You do. Oh, guy. Sheriff Aldani trusted us with security for the fair, and it would be a betrayal of that trust to let these suspicions go uninvestigated. A pirate come train boat operator come security intern's work never be through. Oh, gee. With Miss Tesla in the competition, I can't just phone this in. Watch it, small fry. You nearly sprayed electrical detritus all over my optic sanitation fibers. Well, Mr. Professor, if you'd had helped me like I asked, I'd probably be doing a lot better than this. Help you? Did Katerina Vitale help Atari? Did Elizabeth help Johannes Hevelius? Did Marianne Whitby help Charles Darwin? Yes, yes. And I don't know who those last people are, but I'm guessing yes. Of course they did and they were all worse off for it. You're not going to trick me into giving away my brilliance, little man. Well, little. Oh, I miss the old professor. At least he's more weird than he is mean. Oh, <laughs> hi, Nikita. What are you doing over here? I have some time to spare while I run calculations for the inversion device. And, ugh. hello, Thomas. Mom says I need to make an effort to be not insufferable. You can call me Tommy. Maybe I should call you Nikki. <laughs> I won't, and you shouldn't. Is this your project? I dared hope for more. Oh, oh, oh this, this is just the start. I, uh, I'm building the anti-photon generator in service of a bigger, more complicated project. <laughs> Good. You know, you'd have to if you wanted to hold the figurative candle to me. Forgive me if this sounds like bragging, but you should know I've never lost a science fair before. And I've never failed to win one. Oh, wow. 
don't let the professor hear this, but I think you might be the smartest human I know. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. That seems statistically plausible. I wish I could reciprocate. If you've never done a trained science fair before, what were they like where you lived? Oh, gosh, they were pretty old school and a lot lower tech. One time when I was living in Michigan, I mean, space Michigan, I gave a presentation on visually similar chemicals. Next, we have one of our more promising students shows tremendous potential. Thomas Edison. Tommy, what have you got for us today? Good morning, Mr. The Schoolmaster. Have I got a doozy of a presentation for you. I've used basic chemistry to identify powders from around the school. Well, isn't this exciting? Most of them were pretty easy. The sugar grew mold, the salt dissolved and conducted electricity, calcium carbonate in, in this underwent an acid base reaction, which means chalk dust. I, I was absolutely wrong. The last powder though was troublesome with the capital Ohio. Like the talc, it was insoluble. I tried burning it, not oh, didn't even boil. But then, Eureka! It begins sublimating at 190 degrees centigrade. Yes, yes, Let, let's move on. To... This led me to conclude that the material was Merck's extractive poppy, or common morphine. <laughs> no, no, there's no morphine at our school. Edison, let, let's keep this under wraps. Hmm? Well, how can I win if it's a secret? Well, you're getting better than first place. Grand prize. Hush, hush. Oh, Luffy! Do you actually manually apply chemicals? For sure, all the time. Hmm. Didn't realize you were such a risk taker. We should get you a leather jacket. Was that a joke? <laughs> it was. <laughs> Good one. Sounds like my calculations are done. I'm looking forward to the competition and trouncing you in it. May the best trouncer take it. Could you please turn the music down? Please? Thank you. I was born with a salt pocket behind my uvula, which turns even the sweetest birthday cake into a common basket of chips at a Mexican cantina. Life's hard for me, always tasting the sea. That's why when I see people online mock Naramco's world's blandest cracker, I shrivel up like my lips inching toward another spoonful of arid oatmeal, because I know I will always be a victim in a world of five zone tasting privilege. Naramco cares about underserved populations like mine by making a cracker devoid of even the hint of moisture, flavor, or texture. Made out of carbon nano sawdust, the world's blandest cracker is a miracle of modern science. Oh, and it's not just for the salt pocketed. For those with sweet rot, bitter fangs, or umami tongue, we all find inclusion in the world's blandest cracker. To not stock these everywhere is an act of willful hatred, and those who suffer from but are not defined by taste challenge erasure. But I guess that's the world we live in. You think I wouldn't love to linger on a decadent bran flake? To experience the joy of that cartoon bee eating Cheerios for once without gagging? To be able to normally and sensuously suck on a rock hard stalk of celery? I would. Tens of us would, but you don't see us. You don't believe us. Must be nice to be insulated against the dictates of the gustatory power establishment. For the rest of us, there's the world's blandest cracker by Naramco Snack Food Facsimiles. And now try world's blandest cracker for kids with a morsel of cinnamon in every sheet, weighed in the kiddie pool of flavor, whammo blammo! Oh, Leah, I was looking at my project. What did you put on it? Mirror shards! I thought we agreed to only add to the design if it improved the project. Well, everyone else is much shinier. 
Aunt Leah, I just want to make a good project. I don't expect to win. And I just want to hopefully learn something. (laughs) Not like that, you won't. Even the best project won't win if nobody notices it. That's basically a master's degree in marketing. I don't want to be noticed. It would be nice if I got to spend the whole summer completely unnoticed. I want to be some kid doing some project in some science fair. Fine, fine. We can remove some mirror shards. Thank you. But I'm going to add more glitter. (sighs) Well, Leah, can we just please? Miss Leah, I hope this be not a bad time. Drea. <sighs> Fine. Thank ye. Leah, I need to enlist ye in a secret mission. How like ye the idea of being me informant? Oh, I'd be a perfect informant. People tell me I give too much information basically all the time. In fact, a little bit ago, I was telling the sheriff about how sometimes when I'm nervous, I puke a little in my mouth and it's pretty <laughs> sour, <laughs> but I'm getting used <laughs> to that, that. You're perfect. Yeah, I can't believe I said that. And I can't believe I heard it. <laughs> so what do you need me to do? Leah, you be seeing that pair of kids over there. Don't look. Just see them need to be inconspicuous. Right, right. I've got them in my periphery. <laughs> oh, no winging with your spine, Ilya. Oh, you're better than this. Those two boys keep taking turns talking to those two girls over there. Aye, those two boyos and that pair of girlos be sneaking glances and passing notes back and forth. At one point, they began snickering at this other pair or yonder. Oh, but I only have two eyes. If only I'd attend to that meditation retreat. Oh, well, at least it's only three groups. Oh, wish it were that simple. Who else, Tracy? We be in sure. The best to keep your eye on as many people as you can. Can you do that? Oh, probably. I won't let you down unless there's no other option. Ooh, I got it. Drea, we're adding more mirrors. Oh, why? <clears throat> oh, what do we have here? Hello, my name is Gillian, and welcome to the amazing world of the rainforest car. Hark! Oh! That's nice. Not being easily impressed. Is that the sound of a toucan? No, but it is the sound of a speaker playing a recording of a lyre board. Imitating a toucan. Do I hear a puma? Oh, mon dieu. Nope, just the speaker playing a recording of a lyre bird imitating a puma. And what about... Are you getting all of this, Parsons? I know your finger tip ticking usually stays around four to five words per minute. (laughs) Since the correspondence course, I've been hitting nearly 55 half the time. Whoa there, Gaston Chevrolet. Speeds like those and you're liable to experience a fatal car crash in Beverly Hills. Many birds of the rainforest engage in ritual mating dances to attract a partner. Join me in emulating the courtship spectacle of the bird of paradise. And as Jillian continued her presentation, all but one judge joined, proving themselves capable of finding joy in the building up of others. 
I must say, Julian, this is quite fun. <laughs> yes, Julian, it's better excellent. It's quite even than Zumba is. You're that funny? Pretending to be a bird is better than Zumba. This could be the biggest story the newsletter has broken in a long time. And you, Aurora? That bow presentation, Jillian, top-notch use of lyrebird recordings, you adorable Audubon. <laughs> Shall we? You're a judgmental jerkwad and I don't like you. Don't show your bias, Patty. That's not what your readership expects. Hey there, Sheriff. Fancy seeing you here. This is the security booth, Boris. I'll be here for the entire event. Are you here to place another wager, Boris? You know it. This time, I remember not to say you bet, except for just then. <laughs> well, champ, uh, we've got a few pools open, uh, burns, frequency and severity. Uh, if some sort of time police will interfere, whether or not Teach's conspiracy will turn out to be true, strongest solvent. Wait, wait, what's this about a conspiracy? Bing bong, Sheriff. Have we got news for ye? We be unraveling a conspiracy, the likes of which the Space Train Science Fair has never seen. Tracy? Hear him out, Sheriff, or am I handing in my badge? Very well then, Midshipman, what have you seen? From what I be able to tell, no fewer than 30 of these deck swabbers be passing notes, parroting whispers and generally conspiring. Okay, I don't think that- There be more. Another group of children, almost as large, be behaving similarly, though completely separately. I really don't think there's anything there. That's what I thought too, until teach, Till I be realizing that the two groups could be some manner a gang, a pair of science syndicates, if you will. Teach, were these gangs mostly segrega segregated by age? Aye. And that seems unnatural to you? We be at the precipice, Sheriff. Sidebar, Teach. <clears throat> She seems pretty set on denying the truth, doesn't she? Aye, but why? Unless she understands and is part of the cover-up. Oh, you are so smart. You're the only pirate slash trainman slash intern who could unravel this end sidebar. Thank ye, Sheriff. I've seen the light. I won't be taking up any more of your time. Come, Tracy. I am literally already there. Lost again. The burns are always worse than I expect. Oh, well, back to my lab. Put it back on my tab. <laughs> Better luck next time, Boris. Are you sure that I can't bet that I lose my next bet? No, Boris, you cannot. Did you let someone else bet that he'll lose? Oh, I did, but the odds would just not make it worth it. I'm willing to bet that he wins one today. The next one? Oh, no, just, just one. All right, Sheriff. It's a bet. Come one, come all, and gawk in amazement at Professor L.P. Ratskull and his wondrous machine. This man, he does not look so young. The professor is older. And younger. Than one might imagine. I didn't know the Helens took such an interest in Lawrence Ratskull. A debt is owed. Um, Unpayable. Hey, I, I helped, didn't I? You were... <sighs> Taisez-vous. We must let this shout man talk. Uh. Thank you. 
Misrak, tell me, do you like oranges? Are you busting our Keaton's professor? Of course I like oranges. Perfect. Here, have an orange. Uh, thanks. And another orange. Um, and another. And uh, another. And uh, another. And uh, another. Oh, no. What an unforeseen outcome. Of course, you'd have never dropped all those oranges if you'd have had the Rat Skull Automated Juggling Machine. Am I a mockery to you? Is my art for lives? I have beaten your machine before, Professor, and I will outjuggle it again! <sighs> ah, what is he talking about? You've actually invented this before, Rat Skull. Renault went head to head with your machine, earning him the title Juggling John Henry of France de Spas. Impossible! He's juggling interweaving circles around my device! This also means you can't enter with this since your entry has already been patented. Blast, drat, and confound it all! <laughs> and when you get to L'Enfer, tell them. Renault sent you. <laughs> Sorry for wasting your times. Met him back. Next time, Professor. It's a neat device, Professor. You know, there still may be time for you to enter with something else. Lots of contestants left to review. True. But I'll probably just reinvent another of my genius contraptions. Maybe. Bye, Larry. To give up or to endure, that's the query. Thomas! Thomas Edison! What is it now, Professor? I need your help, your advice, your expertise on me. So now you want something to do with me? Sure, now I benefit. Get me up to speed so I don't reinvent the things I've already created. Gosh, you've been pretty prolific, Mr. Professor. Lots of science, engineering, and poetry innovations. Oh, good. Poetry needed disruption. But tell me, what is science like? Um, most people are no longer interested in science. We've observed most of what there is to observe. After all, the search for the truth is the function of the philosopher. The scientist seeks only the development of increasingly accurate models. Fascinating. But with most macrophysics being modeled perfectly for practical purposes since the 20th century, mm -hmm. and the elements of nano and quantum physics being aggressively absurd, the majority of people devolve to engineering, but still call it science. Ugh, what a relief. Finding good questions is hard. Still, the infinite permutations of chemistry has kept it alive and well. And the soft sciences change our understanding of the observed system, so that research is evergreen. And the explanation of an infinite yet expanding universe is another avenue for expanding knowledge. And no one agrees on economic theory, so you can basically say whatever you want. <laughs> you two are gold mines, fonts of information. Oh, and, and here's a pamphlet on your previous inventions. <laughs> huh, great planning, old man future me. And thank you, Thomas. You too, Nikita. My pleasure. Please stay away from my display. <laughs> he's really not so bad. Yeah, when he's old, Mr. Professor is my best friend, or at least one of them. You're not too bad either, Thomas. <laughs> and you're pretty great. <laughs> hey, don't go soft on me now. Oh, Leah, there are more mirrors on the project now. Volcanoes are secondary now. We need to keep our eyes on everyone from every angle. I just wanted to do a simple volcano themed volcano and be done. Also, if everyone can see us, because we can see them, they can see us. I'm sorry, Drea, and I really hope this doesn't make me the not cool aunt, but it sounds like we may need to separate our projects. 
Fine. Bing bong, Tracy. Summon the mediator. And then the soda jerk said, I'm not interested in phosphates. We only sell. Hey, wait. Oh, Leah, what did I tell you about teleporting me to your position? That I absolutely should not do it without permission. And that goes double for when I'm in the showers. Mm -hmm. Even if I am crying. I brought you here. We need to sever our scientific relationship. But fine, but I'm keeping the majority of my mirrors. Keep all the mirrors. I don't want any mirrors. This is happening because I want zero mirrors. Teach needs me to watch everything. And be better at keeping secrets, Leo. We talked about this. Wait, is this being driven by Teach's theory of the sci fair syndicates? All the ridiculous. No, we're not here to judge. We're here to mediate. So Leah gets the mirrors. And the display wires. Is this all amenable, Drea? Sheriff, funny seeing you here. I promise I'm happy to see it all go. Then this is settled? Beep boop, Tracy, teleport me to the security booth. Of all the absurd. No need to help me. I'll scoop it in my arms like a big girl. I'm sorry it's come to this, Drea. I still love you and hope we can move past this. Finally, now to get back to my project. Wait, where's the reflector dish? Oh, oh no, better get polishing. Drea, you double digit dingus. And then the soda jerk said, I'm not interested in phosphates. We only sell malteds here. I completely <laughs> forgot what we were talking about. Yeah. Well, please believe me when I say it would have been very funny if timed properly. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Can I borrow your pen? I don't like mine anymore. Are you going to give it back? It's a special sheriff pen. Fine. Here. Hey, Sheriff, funny seeing you here. Because we were laughing? Yep. Thanks, Boris. You know, I think I'm gonna take my break. I hear a kid invented a better baked Alaska. Hey there, Boris, ready to place another bet? Oh, I, I don't know, Gabrielle. I just keep losing. And if I'm gonna lose, I wanna lose big. I really admire that about you if you two fine folks are looking for something a bit more exciting i think i can facilitate hello literal stranger uh, hello and salutations uh, naturally there's no mandate for you to listen to anything i have to say assuming you are happy to continue with your penny bets Bets outside of the jurisdiction of the, quote, statistical recreation booth, uh, I'm interested. Count me in, too. <laughs> well, then, if you will just step this way. Mr. Sanderson, off inviting other guests while ignoring the ones you got. Oh, uh, my, my apologies, Hank. Well, no need to apologize. I just wanted to give you this voucher. That is quite a windfall, <laughs> Hank. I will bring you your winnings promptly. Hank, Boris, Gabrielle, you all get to know each other and I will return shortly. Now I take it it's your first time in Sanderson's? I've been here when it's open for sure. I don't remember ever being here. Well, don't you worry, we have a lot of fun. Sanderson, the old worry ward, only opens up his business once a year. But once you're in, you can hobnob till your elbows fall off. How about I show you the ropes for uh, for you and see if one of you might be a lucky rabbit's foot for me? Oh, I was born in the year of the rabbit on a planet under Ryan Shield. Well, if that doesn't spell luck, then I don't know what does. I'm with you, my boy, right this way. Uh, your, your winnings, Hank. Just in time. Here you go, boys. Let's see if we can move a little money around. Gabrielle, join us. 
Oh, it would be my pleasure. Enjoy. And if you need anything, I'll know. Mr. Hatton, doubtless you would like to place a bet. We're currently taking rolling prop bets on the number of swigs of gin Miss Rory Brooke takes in a given five-minute span. Even money is three swigs with an long odds of a seven. Oh, Rory loves gin, but she also loves professionalism. Ten spaces on under three. Oh, live bold, Boris. You're playing with my money anyway. All right. <laughs> Yeah, that better? How <laughs> much? And I'll match that. Yeah, give me over seven. Very finely done. Ooh. All bets are in. Bold to take the long odds, Gabrielle. I like to lose my money a little slower than that. Eight swigs. Miss Gabrielle is the winner. Good job, Gabrielle. <laughs> well, let's roll up our sleeves, get a drink, and see where the evening takes us. I bet. Eventually, it takes us to bed. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real cracker, Jack Boris. <laughs> and Penny, I say this as your better. Adverbs are not your friends. They're the losers who hang out behind the field house smoking, you know, like the people who tolerated you in school. <laughs> I was learning how to chalk street. We could forecast during this presentation. That would be for the best. Yes, that would be appropriate. Of course, of, of course, of course. Stop distracting me, Patty. Hello. Have you ever wondered, wanted to know what it tastes like this, to taste the stars? <laughs> what, what it tastes like to taste the stars? <laughs> Patty, that kind of pointless question is exactly the kind of parrot dirt the Space Train newsletter thrives on. <laughs> um, there's interesting science behind it. I worked really hard on it and... <laughs> and look what you've done, Rory. Come here, petite de cure de toi. Show and now your figures. The judges panel was forced to follow in the wake of Aurora Rook, who trumped about the fair with all the grace and care for who she heard as a monster might take traipsing tremendously amidst the crumbling buildings of Space Tokyo. Come now, Patty, who have I hurt? Your hairpin heartstrings notwithstanding. Me, you hurt me. Moi, I see. Let's go, Helen. Yes, Helen. Maury's friends sloughed up like chunks of skin from a sunburn. Her alabaster skin proved she'd never had. Perhaps for her, Friendships were just as elusive as a tan had been. <laughs> Shut up, Patricia. Well, we, Mr. Professor, it sure looks like you've been busy. <laughs> yes, yes, Tommy, my peer, and all thanks to you. Does that mean you'll cite me for the helpful conversations if you publish the paper? Of course, right after FDC Willard. The Academic Cat? Oh, what an honor! Indeed. At first, I thought I might propose Retzkalonomics, an economic mm -hmm. theory in which all money is divested to me, and then I spend it as I see fit before it all falls down on the lesser folk through gravity. Oh, makes as much sense as any other economic theory. But. I knew I was better than some Paul Krugman. So I knew I had to do real science, soft or quantum, when it occurred to me, why not both? Hmm? You mean combining the soft and hard sciences in some sort of grand unified science? Precisely. Tom, imagine this. What if the quantum world were ruled by a conscious mind? And what if that consciousness were truly Brilliant little shit. I mean, a real spiteful bastard. Then it might make nanostate changes to actively confound predictability. Yes, precisely. Looking at a quark is like peeping on a naked person without proper consent. Wowie zowie, Professor. <laughs> if, if you can prove this, it'll be something. 
In fact, if it really is conscious, that would mean Nikita. Oh, um, I have to go, Mr. Professor. It's been great talking to you as a peer. <laughs> yeah, goodbye, Thomas. <laughs> what a truly fascinating young man. Doubtless, we will both grow up to do great things. <laughs> Larry Rutskull, Larry Rutskull, who are you? What do you do? Find out the whole matter is a single body that's conscious to, conscious to. <laughs> All right, brain trust. What have we got? I've been going through yon rubbish bins, removing notes discarded by the children. And I've used my mirrors to track the movements of everyone in the room. I'll send you my notes. Uh, ah, how did you get this to upload with heart-shaped tittles over the eyes and J's? Evil fairy godmother curse. Oh, God, it feels like I'm going to get a cavity. Ah. Uh. Teach, give me your notes. Bing bong, Tracy! Scan papers! Oh, human dis teenagers are disgusting. Oh, definitely. This one time when I was 14, I <laughs> sat on a cold- <laughs> Leah, they absolutely forbid you from finishing that story. Hurry up, Tracy. We mightn't have much time. I am trying, but it is hard to concentrate with all these tittles in my head. Yikes. I didn't even know Tracy could gag. <laughs> there we go. We've got it all done and... Huh. No, 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 what? <sighs> it looks like we really might have stumbled upon a conspiracy. Of course there be! We knew it all along! Multiple groups converging on a single person. Nikita Tesla. Last year's winner and this year's chalk. It could be converging because she's the biggest competition, or... Or it be a charade to hide that she be the mastermind steering the armada of all science syndicates. But you don't think Drea would get caught up in something like that, do you? <laughs> oh no. Drea? Oh, I'm such a bad aunt. Drea? Next up, we have last year's winner, a real honey cup, Nikita Tesla. Take it away, Nikita. <laughs> Good evening, members of the judges panel. Since time immemorial, humanity has sought to deepen its understanding of the material world. With each new step, our pace seemed to quicken, but eventually we came to a wall, a sheer cliff of, of, of which we could throw our bodies, but never climb. This can is good. Patty, you should take notes. If you could write like this, I might actually care. Oh, really? You might care? Because that's all I've ever wanted, Roy. Please, real people don't like this kind of pomp. I thought we told you to. No more insulting the contestants. The child has done marvelous work. But we do wish. We'd get to the point a little more quickly. Nikita! Nikita! Thomas! I'm in the middle of my presentation. We need to talk before the end of your presentation. It's about the quantum consciousness. The what? We need to ask the be being that ties together all matter for permission. The professor hypothesizes- And Thomas, I don't have time for your professor's theories. I'm giving my presentation right now. And so- Ahoy, babies, be it known, Nikita Tesla, stands sovereign of the science syndicates. I found ye out, Tesla, and now the reckoning. Finally, something interesting. Batty, give me that pen and paper. This is... Most unseemly. What is going on here? Teach tells of teen tyrants, towering talent and performance as potentate. Rory, are you daylighting as a reporter when you should be moonlighting as a judge? And she stole my notebook. Arrest her. Hello, Mr. Quantum Consciousness. Miss, 
Oh, geez, I'm already on the wrong foot, but is it okay if my friend brings you into macro space? Tommy be about to sabotage the project. What do you do now, midshipman? Watch the lad take down the syndicate or enforce the rules and stop him? I'll just activate it. Well, that was most, uh... Was climactic, Helen? Thomas sabotaged my project! He was scared to face me in a fair competition! I didn't sabotage, I was just talking! Oh, no! Teach, what is happening here? This is chaos. Aye, chaos be the natural state of things when we depose a syndicate head... Victory! Victory! Miss Rook, this has been a degutant display of chicanery. This cannot go without punishment. I invoke the juggler's privilege to remove you as judge. Other Helen, don your judge's robe. <laughs> wow, Gabrielle. Who would have guessed I'd get every part of that wrong and you'd get every part right? Yes, who indeed. Oh, come now, Sanderson, give the lady her winnings. Not quite. There's still one more bet in the parlay. Fine. Care to let me double down? Huh. You all seen Drea? I wanted her to offer my project as a backup in case hers didn't. Um. Pay up. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Carol, I brought back your casserole dish. Oh, thanks, hon. Just throw it in the casserole dish cabinet. <laughs> Of course. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. What is that? <laughs> oh, that? That's my baby. It's so sporty. Is it new? Where'd you get it? Can you keep this between friends? It's homemade. No, I could have sworn it was store-bought. Oh, the Naramco at-home baby making kit makes it easy to grow a baby on the go. Tell me more. I bet it takes a lot of specialized knowledge and money. With Dave's clumsiness, remember the birdhouse? <laughs> With an Aramco at home baby making kit, anyone is only a few months away from their own baby. And you can do it with stuff already in your house. Uh huh, but I'm sure it took a lot of time. Well, you know me. <laughs> a woman, well, now a mom, and only a mom. On the go, just mix up a few simple ingredients. Nine months later, and an excruciating extraction process later, a baby that looks better and costs less than the leading brands. And Dave was okay with it? Oh, he insisted. We had so much fun making it, we might be buying another kit soon. <laughs> At home baby making kit, huh? Mm -hmm. You have me convinced. <laughs> the Naramco at home baby making kit. Find it at your pharmacy today. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Looks like somebody made a mess of the science fair. <laughs> Don't you blame me, Bramble Thwart? Oh, oh, blame you? <laughs> oh, I'd never do something like that. Have to wonder if those are the declarations of a guilty conscience. <laughs> I assure you that is not the case, and I would appreciate it if you focus on the subject at hand. Oh, oh the subject of you denying my jurisdiction? The subject of me asserting mine. As sheriff of the entire space train, there is no question the science fair six belong in my custody. Oh, 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 but the science fair car is a wholly owned subsidiary of Space Transport Shopping Malls Limited. Nikita and Tommy are minors, uh, appropriately placing them in the custody of the Space Train Shopping Mall Mega Complex Security Booth Retention Center for Wayward Ragamuffins. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, and Tommy, <laughs> that little cracker, that little cracker Jack has priors, which makes extradition of questionable appropriateness. <laughs> Midshipman Teach, regrettably, was acting under your guidance and will be released for internal disciplinary actions with Sheriff Co. <laughs> Gotta be grateful for, for qualified immunity. Oh, I'm not grateful. Not grateful one Jamba Juice small banana berry blast. One time, oh, must have been 50 years ago, I was a junior security guard on loan to Space Transport ba uh, Bazaar's LLP. And uh, I'll let me tell you what. Patty, I will not be lectured on civility by someone who doesn't have the decency to use an Oxford comma. Oh, trust me, Aurora. I wouldn't lecture you any more than I'd be willing to write articles for your aging readership. You better not be letting me out on a technicality. One day my conviction will come. Keepers, Nikita, I promise. I didn't do anything to sabotage your project. Thomas, the chances that any piece of circuitry failed at that moment are less than 1% of 1%. The long arm of the law gets you again. You can't beat Space Train City Hall. Oh, wow. I'm so glad we got to spend so much time together. I feel closer to you all than ever before. <laughs> and honestly, I'd love the chance to get symbolic progress against my old nemesis, qualified immunity. <laughs> Are you even listening to me? Oh, what an old man like me might not give for a chance at even one victory in the face of QI, which is what we call it in the support group. <laughs> Restorative justice, potato cannon, Margaret Thatcher, the Zodiac how dare you detox the dum-dum from my system? I'd have half a mind to threaten you, but then you might let me go. You're nothing more than a parody of a communications degree shoved into a cloth puppet. And you're a painfully parrot-like purveyor of pulp print that appeals to a populace without a shadow of poignancy. Alliteration is the last resort of the witless, you pompous, pretentious, pig-headed, and me, doomed to shuffle forwards towards my final bed of rest, unable to make even a dent in <sighs> I'm thinking of writing a book of my experience in the Hooskow. Does anyone want to write it for me? But it's obvious that in the face of a luckbuster performance on your own part and a fear of losing your first science fair, that... I get it, security guard, I get Do it. To failure in my 50 plus year mission to get I'll rid trade of teach for the other six. Oh, well, well, that sounds just fine. And I want a coupon for a free Cinnabon, too. Uh, calling all yahoos and hooligans. We'll be going with the sheriff. Yar, sweet. Freedom and fresh air. It's good to be out again on qualified immunity. Oh, I said yahoos and hooligans are free, midshipmen, not ne'er do wells. Curse ye <laughs> Well, thank you, Sheriff. I await our next chance to meet as equals in justice. <laughs> oh, ew. Gross. All right, rat skull. Hell okay. no, I won't go. Hell no, I won't go. Okay, Hell okay, no. Okay. okay, okay. I'll tell you what. If you go now, I'll put you in lockup for three whole hours. How does that sound? Uh, fine. I'll be back again someday. As for the rest of you, I need to schedule your arraignments, but if you admit that you learned a lesson, I can let you go. Otherwise- Rory is a professional bully. A uh, professional bully, I'm drunk, and you're the one who sounds like a child. Never since the great science fair scandal of Cheyenne 2003 has a greater injustice- I'm trying to explain that it was a mean, shy ghost in the sky. <sighs> so no, no lessons learned. I'll need to release each of you into someone else's custody. Sheriff Aldani, I do think I Leon, learned that you are on the thinnest ice of all. Oop. I do my best friendship when I'm scared sweating. 
everyone just hang out. I will send some messages. It's a big payday, but I bet you'll lose it before you get your saddle. Yeah, I'll take that action. Uh, it's just the look on Sanderson's face was just... Uh, Sheriff, uh, what are you doing here? Prisoner exchange, you? Oh, Gabrielle and I were just headed to the mall after the big win. At the arcade at the car, uh, Boris was just showing me some video games he played as a kid. How curious. I would have thought you were headed there to share in the winnings that you got at Sanderson's secret gaming room. How is Hank, the Marquis? Huh, I haven't the foggiest idea. I mean, who? Well, that seems unlikely. Thanks for holding on to my pen microphone for me, though. Let's me hear everything. Oh, did you start in crime, Sheriff? Because you are bar none one of the craftiest, most deceitful people I know. And I think, oh, hey, that's my money. Sorry, Gabby. Civil asset forfeiture cuts one way. Should have stuck to your own booth. Hey, I won. I'm dead. Uh, Boris, I can either give you your winnings that before, <laughs> or wipe your tab clean. Hmm. That doesn't seem fair to you, Gabrielle. I'll just take my winnings and saltwater taffy. Fine. You know, Gabrielle, if Boris won a bet, that means... What? How? Oh, I hate science first! Do you want saltwater taffy too? We both know what I want. I'll pick you up for a friend date tomorrow. Just don't tell. I would never tell Leah. Can I convince each of you to take a surly reporter with you, Rory or Patty? Oh, yeah. I'll take Miss Rule. Patty and I have classifieds to go over anyway. Great. Rory, Patty, some people are here to pick you up. I am not a child in need of... Boris, <laughs> you can pick me up any day. <laughs> oh, hopefully just the ones. <laughs> come, come on. How long do I have to stay with him? The, the whole day? Let's leave the sheriff to her tyranny. Tyranny? You know, the tyranny Saurus Rex was my favorite dinosaur from age three to seven. And then after that, I don't even really remember. But at age 19, it was the Anglosaurus because my ankles were my favorite body part. Then. Uh -huh. You know, Patty, you think you could have a better working relationship. Iron sharpening iron and all that. She'd have to admit she needs sharpening first. Gabrielle. I'm next. <laughs> Sorry, Leah. I wish I could release you on your own. Believe me, because I have to sit here with you until someone gets here. Aunt Leah? Drea! Perfect. Off you go. Drea, I'm really sorry. I got so caught up in trying to impress my friends that I ignored the person mm -hmm. I owe the most to. Pretty uncool, huh? Yeah, it, it was. But you have to be a lot less cool to be the not cool aunt. And the mall is out that way. I got second place. Really? That's so great. I mean, not to be rude, but how did you do it with no sparkly mirrors? <laughs> you took my reflector dish, but I found a hyperbolic plate of platinum alloy. And it turns out it increased the amount of gamma radiation generated by the stellar volcano or Eruption device by a lot. <laughs> Drea, I'm really confused by what you said, but I'm really proud of what you did and really grateful for who you are. I love you too, Aunt Leah. Let's go. A cool aunt song. <sighs> okay. I've got a cool aunt. She's only five one. But in each inch, she packs fun in a ton. Yeah, <laughs> please leave. Okay, you two ragamuffins. I know you're probably at each other's throats at this point, but let's get this over with. But that makes as much sense as any other economic theory. I know. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, 
I apologized and apologized and apologized again. And I'm almost ready to believe him. And then I finally said the thing she wanted to hear. He's intimidated by me. (laughs) Of course, but a girl likes to hear it sometimes. And then to blot out Leah, we started talking science. And it turns out that even though he's a little less educated, he has a lot of insights. And she knows theories I've never heard before. Restorative justice breaking through the carceral state. Given your new mutual respect, Tommy, Nikita, can I trust you in each other's custody? (laughs) Golly, Miss Sheriff, can you ever? I'd love the chance to learn from you, Nikita. I'm curious what I may learn from your open-mindedness, Tommy. Is it okay to still call you Tommy? It sure is. And can I call you Nikki? You may not. I've been radical kid this whole time. I should have changed back into Hank at some point. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Space Train, the 25th annual Space Train Science Fair. You can come back June 3rd to watch. Excuse me to watch rat sculling into butter. It's a very fun episode where rat skull does rat skull things. If you like rat skull or indeed any of the other characters, please join us for that. Tonight's episode of Space Train was written by Stephen Saltzman with story by Aaron Garrett and Stephen Saltzman. And it featured Liz Castillo as Sheriff Aldani, Lauren Hainley as Gabrielle du Brazil, Ben Hudson as Boris, Alex Lang as Leah Zelensky, Sandra Peck Ramsey as Tracy, Stephen Saltzman as Professor Ratskull, Kat Stroud as Tommy Edison, and Caitlin Zeller as Rory Rook. And it also had Megan Avocado, Sarah Denton, Aaron Garrett, Ian Mazzi, and Seth Ramsey in today's Episode featured Alex Crow as Drea, Dano Colon as Midshipman, Teach Bailey Hampton as Nikita Tesla, Rebecca Bernstein as Helen Atchison, Brian Kondrak as Silvo Bramblethwart, and of course, Ruth McCleskey as Patty Parsons. We hope you join us again next Space Train and for every Space Train and indeed every live event Pronoia does on Thursdays. If you enjoyed the show, again, you can go to paypal.me slash pronoia theater or venmo at pronoia if you want to give us money in some other way just let us know we we'd like it so we'll make it easy for you everyone have a good 